the vehicle of your destiny. Say it loudly. The vehicle of my destiny. Say it loudly. The vehicle of my destiny. Father, we give you praise as we pray through the vehicle of our destiny. Father, may you release, may you reveal the plans, Lord, and more important, the purpose for which you have called us to worship you. The reason why you've called us to be used, Lord, to make sure that your purposes come to pass. Hallelujah. I want us to look at a few biblical examples. Number one, somebody like uh, Rahab, she was a harlot, but her vehicle of destiny was her hospitality. Say hospitality. Hospitality. Say hospitality. Hospitality. So it was tired to hiding the spies from Israel and the rope with which she let down those spies to what? Escape. Are you with me? I, I want you to catch the vision. I want you to catch the insight. Else you understand why there are certain things that, you know, you expected that it shall come to pass in your life, but then it seems to be suppressed. Always there's suppression. So suppose Rehab shone these spies. What do you think will happen? That could have been the end of her destiny. So we will not be, you know, one way or the other, reading today that she was part of the lineage of Jesus. When you look at the beginning of the Luke Gospel and also Matthew Gospel, we see Rehab there. Amen. Amen. So the question is, what is the vehicle of your destiny? If, at first, I want you to thank God that he has revealed the vehicle of your destiny to you. Begin to thank him. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We adore you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say amen. Amen. Now, for King David, the vehicle of his destiny was his curiosity. That is his quest to know what was happening in the battlefield and who was Goliath to be harassing the people of God. So he left, I mean, he was left in the field to look after the sheep while his elderly brothers went to the war front. But those senior brothers could not perform on the battlefield until he got there. And of course, the challenge of Goliath was the promotion of David. See the challenge. The challenge. See the challenge of the enemy. The challenge of the enemy. It's my promotion. It's my promotion. So I want you to understand some of these vehicles of destiny. For me, I don't see when the forces of darkness are contending against me personally. I don't see it as something for me to recoil into my shell, no. And so I want you to understand some of these things in Scripture. Also, the hatred and the pursuit of Saul after David was another vehicle of destiny for David. I don't know the enemy who is pursuing you. Hallelujah. I, I don't know, but I want you to understand that if there are some forces or powers of darkness pursuing you, then today is the day to understand that is the vehicle of your destiny for promotion, for increase. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I want you to pray against all those forces. And listen, the Bible even speaks of the Father. The Lord says, I'll set a table in the presence of what? Your enemies. So this means that the vehicle of your destiny may sometimes be unfriendly. It may be things you do not enjoy or dislike in your life. So we are going to pray in the name of Jesus and begin to take authority against all the negative elements and then pray for God to give you the anointing, hallelujah, Amen. to pursue your vehicle of destiny. Begin to pray. Father,
the name of Jesus. Amen. Now for Apostle Peter, Peter's vehicle of destiny was his fishing joy. He went on a fishing, he fishing. He, yeah, say fishing. fishing. Yeah, he did it all the night and it implied that he was not a lazy person. Very hard working guy. But he was also a generous what? Person. No, so those of you who are so generous, is that is what is what? Is your vehicle or what? Destiny. Destiny. That's why I like giving. Because you see, that sets you on promotion. That sets you on success. That sets you on breakthrough. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let me tell you, there was this guy who would come and every time he would do something for me, he would do something for me, he would do something for me. Then while he came and we was going, I call him, I say, come. Something is going to happen tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And then now that thing has become a very success story in his life. Are you with me? Yes. And he was shocked that I told him that it's going to happen this evening. And he looked at my face. So he got home, he had a call, and he went and picked that thing. It's a new thing. So, and since that, he has been doing those generous things because that generosity is the vehicle of what is destiny. Are you with me? Some people, they are going to enjoy longevity of life. They are going to see their children because of what the release of generosity. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is what happened to our dear brother and our dear anointed Peter. Hallelujah. Amen. So from when Jesus asked him to release his boat to him, he did not complain of not being able to catch any fish. The previous night. He didn't complain. He said, take it. If it were to be me, or maybe you, you would have complained. He didn't say, you would have complained and say, Lord, you know, I can't give it to you. Have you seen how I've, I've suffered throughout the whole of this night? And you are coming to tell me to give my boat to you. <laughs> you see? So that is what it is. It's a very generous man. And more importantly, he did not complain of not being able to catch any fish the previous night. Also, his boldness and humility to follow Jesus in spite of the fact that at 66 years old, say 66 years old. <laughs> in fact, as a matter of fact, if we were to be in America on American, on an American, if he was to be American, it means 66, he would start collecting his what, social security. Are you with me? But this guy said, no, 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 no. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. So at least 66 years plus three years. By the time Jesus went on the cross, he was at the age of 71, right? Like that is a rough estimate. So he's age doubled the age of Jesus Christ in the physical. But this guy was so humble to follow Jesus. So his humility. Hallelujah. Yeah. His boldness, hallelujah. Amen. His generosity, hallelujah. Amen. So I want you to pray your own today. That Lord, I know who I am. I know you have given me the gift of this and this and this. Prepare me 2022 so that Lord, let your spirit help me. You know, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of generosity. God, the Holy Spirit will release what? Protection. The Holy Spirit will release your guidance. Every time we mention the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when it comes to, we don't want to give. <laughs> so I want you to pray. I don't know the vehicle of your destiny. But please, as, as some of you, I know you are givers in this ministry. So that is your vehicle of destiny. So pray the Lord this year. May you use it. Hallelujah. Amen. I say, Lord, use it. Yes. Lord, use it. As a God speed. As a God speed. Holy Spirit speed. Holy Spirit speed. To bring prosperity. To bring prosperity. Increase. Increase. In my life. In my life. Begin to pray, Father. <laughs>
In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Now, the prophet Elisha, two vehicle of destiny, was his hard work, his loyalty to his master, his stubborn faith, and his vigilance, which made him to follow Elijah and to get the double portion. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God that for the prophet Elisha for such a very glorious thing. Amen. Amen. And how shameful it was for Gehazi, who could have got four times the anointing of Elijah, but instead he collected leprosy, thus putting his prosperity in trouble. You see, some of you in this ministry, I see you collecting leprosy. <laughs> because see, anytime God gives you a good job, anytime God gives you good marriage, anytime God gives you, you go back and it becomes so difficult for you even to come into the presence of God and worship him. And so at times I could see how people are suffering. Pray that may never happen to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Begin to pray. Father. Jesus say amen. amen. Then my brother Gideon too. Gideon, another man of destiny. This guy was working so hard, you see, in the midst of the enemy. See, at times it's good to work in the midst of the enemy territory. At times it's good to work even in the midst when a lot of problems keep coming your way. At times you'll be on the job and then from time to time you realize that even the strength with which to do the work, even it's not there. Because there are so much problems going on in your marriage. So much hard time that is being given to you by your kids. That is who Gideon was. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the angel came unto him and said, Peace unto you, great man of valor. He was cajoled by the angel's statement. So he said, Which peace? When what I'm doing here is in the secret of our oppressors. Nobody know. When my oppressors see that I'm doing these things, listen, they'll kill me. So his openness and admission of helplessness was his vehicle of destiny. And so some people, they come into the presence of God. They stand there like, unlike the Jewish guy. You know, this was a Gentile guy who said, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Hallelujah. Amen. He just opened up for his helplessness. At times, it's good to come into the presence of God and say, Lord, this week is very difficult for me. I'm going through a lot. So, Lord, help me. All that God wants to hear from you. Lord, look at what is going on in my kid's life. Look at what happened yesterday. Look at this and look at this. These are the vehicle of our destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. And so here we see Gideon in the presence of God. His openness, admission of helplessness was a vehicle of destiny. His readiness to carry out divine instruction to the latter was his vehicle of our destiny to some of us I think what you are missing is that when God begins to give us the promise, the message, if we find it difficult from following it. So begin to pray that your eyes will be opened. Hallelujah. Amen. And that whatever God is giving to you, my brother, my sister, open up. These are promises of God. Pursue it. Hallelujah. Amen. Expect. You must be in expectation. Begin to pray. Okay. In Jesus' name we pray, say amen. Amen. Then Mary Madeline. What was Mary Madeline's vehicle of destiny? Her demons, of course. So from where Jesus cast out seven demons. So Satan 
made one of the greatest mistakes of his life when he invaded Mary Madeleine. You see, some people complain if you know the kind of deliverance I've done in the past. Well, if such people properly examine it, they will discover that said deliverance may turn out to be their vehicle of destiny. It was the deliverance of this woman, Mary Madeline, that made her heart to be the first person to see the Lord Jesus Christ. When he rose from the dead, her seeking for deliverance became the vehicle of her destiny. Some of you, the way you seek God, the way you keep seeking God, the way you keep coming to the Lord, these are the vehicle of your destiny. Are you with me? May God release that anointing of Mary Madeline upon you so that you start seeking, seeking, seeking. You never, you never stop coming to the presence of God. You never stop following Jesus Christ. Like how Mary Madeline followed Jesus. Wherever you go, this lady will be there. Wherever you go, this lady will be there. Mary was there. Jesus was supposed to tell Mary, Mary, Listen, they are demanding tax money from me. But Jesus said, no, Mary, you have supported my ministry so much. But this one, I want you to realize that even if you are not there, God will take care of his business. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So at that moment, the Lord commanded what? The fish to come and took money to pay his tax. That's why you have to be very careful. At times, some people, are, you know, they find it difficult understanding scripture. You see, unless the Holy Spirit open your mind, you will never understand this thing. When God gives you the opportunity to, uh, to support the ministry, please never put a break on it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Amen. As you, you get to a certain point, the oil will stop flowing. Because you decided that without you, nothing goes on. Which of, of course is lie. Because there's nothing that belongs to you as a matter of fact that it wasn't god who gave it to you amen. amen so you are just a vessel in the lord's hands so you are going to pray the lord like mary magdalene hallelujah amen. see some of you i know some of them who came here and because of deliverance for the first time they had an encounter with the lord jesus christ the later on they start misbehaving. I see without them, this ministry cannot, you know, perform the performance that God has ordained this ministry. So you are going to pray that may God remove all those pride and all those uncertain things and all those mediocre mentality, but rather focus on the Lord. Keep seeking Him. Hallelujah. Like Mary, keep following. Keep, even if they tell you that you are not supposed to go to that place. Say, listen, I'm going to that place. Immediately I get there. I know that I'm holding all those stuff to go and embalm him. But Mary went there to embalm Jesus. And for the first time, I saw that Jesus he even mistook Jesus to be the gardener. Are you with me? So I want you, you see, he saw Jesus even beyond the grave. Some of us, we are not seeking Jesus beyond the grave. We are seeking Jesus before the grave. What you will eat, what we drink. Are you with me? But Mary was the only one who saw Jesus beyond the grave. Pray that God will give you that anointing to seek him beyond the grave. Begin to pray. That is your victory. Let me pray, Amen. Amen. Then, my dear brother Joseph, Joseph, vehicle of destiny, was envy and jealousy of his brother. See, envy and jealousy. Envy and jealousy. I've never complained to anybody that people jealous me, people envy me. Never, because I know it's a vehicle of my promotion. Oh, you didn't hear me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even his father cautioned him to desist from talking about his dream. He says, I'll talk about it. He queried, how can I and your mother be bowing down for you? 
False accusation was also a vehicle of destiny. Mammon Kao, my name, Hallelujah. Make they say it to make you know they come to pass. Are you with me? And so they later on, when he got to prison, he told Pharaoh Butler that he was going to be released and that he should remember him. But the Bible says the man forgot Joseph in the prison after his release. We understand here that broken promises also added to his vehicle of destiny. Say broken promises. Broken promises. Say broken promises. Broken now let me tell you, a lot of people have promised me to do this, to do that. I saw it as God's way of blocking it. So that at the appointed time, his own promise shall come to pass. As they will say that I made pastor not to prosper. <laughs> Are you with me? So stop praying. Stop praying, Father, in Jesus' name. we pray amen. amen now listen and finally i want you to understand this your destiny is the reason why you were born say my destiny my destiny is the reason is the reason i was born i was born now listen that is the purpose of god for your life and and destiny also can be defined as what is written say what is written what is written now today I want us to pray on the prayer requests. Because people don't understand. Anytime you write something on the prayer request, you are writing what? Your destiny. So be very careful. Because if you do understand some of these things, you just see it as something that probably you are writing it for. Uh, people are writing it, so you too are writing. No. Because listen, the Bible says concerning Jesus. He said, Jesus said, the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. Matthew chapter 26, 24. Meaning that your destiny is when you go as it is written of you. As it is what? Written. written. Say written. 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 So written. written. But some of the writings, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, what? He used his blood to what? To wipe Peter away. Is in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. 14 to 16. Wipe it. Who wrote it? It's the devil. Are you with me? So anytime you write those things and you bring it into the altar of God, you are telling God that the enemy has written something about you, so God should what? That's it. That's why from time to time people will come and say, Pastor, you remember last two years I wrote this thing. Everything that I wrote has happened. God has answered it. So today we are going to pray. Amen. Amen. Now listen, in Jeremiah chapter 1, God says, verses 4 to 5, he says, Jeremiah, before you was born, I knew you, right? That's a destiny. Then by the time we come to verse 12, he said, what do you see? He said, I see this. Then he said, in verse 4, he said, what do you see again? You see, something has been written. And God is telling Jeremiah, what do you see? So now what do you see about your life? And then Noah said, listen, I'm making sure that whatever I've said about you, I'm looking over my way to what? Perform. Amen. Amen. So now what do you see? All these years that you have been in America, what do you see about your life? You see? Are you, are, are you understanding? What do you see? So you have to be very careful about those prayer requests. Because some people don't understand even the spiritual dimensions of what we, happens over here. So you are going to pray. The Lord has presented my prayer requests. But everything that has been written about me, which is of, which is of you, let it come to pass. Look at what God said. God told Jeremiah, he said, get ready. 
get ready because I'm going to pull down certain things. And after I pull it down, I'm going to use to pull it down. After I pull it down, I'll rebuild it. Hallelujah. Amen. So there must be pulling down. There must be rebuilding. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I said there must be what? Pulling down. And there must be what? Rebuilding. You see, there are certain things that have been rebuilt, built in your life. It must be pulled down. This is from the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. This is from the flesh. This is from your own confessions. Confessions. Stop praying. Pull it down. I said, pull it down. Hey, Jesus. Pull it down. Hey, Pharaoh. Say amen. amen. Now listen. God told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, before you were born, even when you were in mother's womb, I've already ordained you. Hallelujah. Amen. So that is what we call destiny. Say destiny. destiny. It means that your destiny is already programmed by God. It's already what? Programmed by what? God. God. It's already what? programmed by God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so one way or the other, your destiny is already programmed by the Almighty God, but then it can be diverted, it can be destroyed, it can be perverted, it can be smashed to pieces or fragmented. Listen, look, look, look at what somebody said. He says, we don't see things as they are. No. We don't see, but he says, we see them as we are. We see them as what? Well. Yeah. Now, if you want to see me, my destiny, look at my destiny. What I am is what my destiny is. Amen. Amen. I say, what, what I am is what, what my destiny is. Are you with me? So, you come here <laughs> and then you say, oh, Pastor, no, I'm here to seek the face of the Lord so that God will change my life. My destiny is that I want to make sure that God touches you. I'm not here to take anything from you. But a lot of the leaders, when they go, <laughs> he's going to give you false prophecies and take things from you. But you make sure that you'll be in your bandage. You'll be like the cult, right? Chain. So that's what is happening. So be very careful about people you attach yourself and be very careful. Look at them. Look at what they are going through. You get it? So that is what it takes. So you are going to pray. So that is the meaning here. So God is reprogramming your destiny. Now some of you are born into certain things. I don't want to go there. Because it's a long stuff. So God says, the way you see your life shapes your life. So, you see, the way you want to influence people. I've had some people who are destroying their kids. I've heard a lot of people. The advices they give them, the way they give, the, the opportunity they give them is coming out of them. They are destroying things. My, my daddy didn't allow me to do stupid things. He won't allow you. He will never allow you. I say, my daddy won't what? He will always keep boundaries around me. Yeah. So, I've, by God's grace, I've grown to be an adult person. What I'm seeing that what the man invested in me is affecting people today. Amen. Amen. So, if you are my church member, I don't allow you to fool. I, I, I tell you, when you come here, focus on the Lord. Hallelujah. Because something is coming out of me into you. Yes, it's the Lord. Yeah. You see, some people will say, oh, God will do it, God will do it. But you have gone through all... The other day, somebody was telling me, he said, Pastor, I've gone to this place. 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 He says, I've gone through all these top, top men of God. Then I came here. And I say, because you were putting your this thing in those people. 
Amen. Amen. Are you with me? So God has shaped me to be somebody who is always in the presence of God. So when you come, God will use that destiny of my life to shape you. Amen. Are you getting it? Yeah. The destiny of what? Yeah. Because I'm a vessel in the hands of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you can quote scriptures and say, God will answer. It's okay. But who is the vessel? Is the vessel ready to pay the price? Hallelujah. Amen. I say, is the vessel ready to pay the price? A lot of people don't want to pay the price. And so that is what we are saying. Some of them, God has shaped their destiny in that manner. Jesus' destiny was shaped in a way that he has to go to the cross before we receive our salvation. Amen. But today we don't see that way. Are you with me? Who is prepared to pay that price? Everybody is drinking uh, juice. So, uh, what? Soda. Kevas. Chicken wings. Instant tea. Fried rice. Are you with me? No time to wait upon the Lord. Everybody wake up in the morning. Rush in to go to work. Come home tired. What television like three hours. <laughs> As for the phone, it's a daily stuff. <laughs> oh my God. So look at what they are. You see, have you seen what you are seeing? You are witnessing their destiny. And that is why we need a new perception of the word of God. You need to understand it. So you are going to pray that enough is enough. enough. Say enough is enough. enough. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Enough, is enough. enough is enough. I am ready. I am, ready. I am getting ready. I am, ready. I am a vessel in your hands. Stop praying. Begin to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for answered prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.